So this is a quick tutorial on animating objects in Unreal Engine, so specifically Blueprint actors. So right now I've created a folder structure and then what, what I'm gonna do is create the Blueprint actor itself. So you click on it, I create an actor, and then you name it. So right now I'm naming it BP underscore door underscore zero one. And then with that name, I'm saving so that I don't lose my work. Then I double click on the Blueprint Actor. I open it up and what I want to do is add some components to it. So the first thing I want to do is add a static mesh component. In order to do it faster, I'm going into my mesh folder, all uh, the place where I have all of my FBX files. So I select the door frame, which is the first thing I want to add. And then I go back and then I add the static mesh component. Because I've selected it, the name comes for free because it's already named in the object on the static mesh itself. So the component is named accordingly. Then I go back and select the root of the blueprint actor. And then I come back and select the door panel because I'm going to do this multiple times. I just come back into the folder to select the static mesh, go back at the static mesh component, and then the name comes for free. And then with this one, I just move it into place because the pivot is a little different. I move it into place and I make sure that everything's aligned. And then I move on to the next one, which is the panel for the door handle. And then I repeat the same process, making sure I select the root before adding the component. So once the component's selected, I add it, and then it's renamed. Now I am changing the movement, uh, the, the unit of movement. So I'm, I'm changing that because it's easier for a smaller actor like this, a static mesh actor like this. I, I need to move it into place. So I change the unit of movement from 10 to 1. So I just move it gradually until I find the position where it's supposed to be. I know I created this in Studio 3 Studio Max, so I'm aligning things properly uh, based on the pivot point of the door panel because that's how it was aligned in 3D Studio Max. And then after that, I just make sure everything's snug to the door the way it's supposed to be. And once I move it into place, I check it and make sure everything's right. And then I move on to the last component, uh, the static mesh component I need to add, making sure I select the root before doing that. So I select the root, I select the static mesh, I add the static mesh component, and then I move it into place. With this one, I'm moving it onto the area where the, um, the panel for the door handle was. I center it and make sure it's aligned, compile, save. And then I move on to the last component that I'm going to be adding to it. Uh, before I do that, I'm actually attaching some of the actors to each other. So I'm attaching the door handle and the door handle panel to the door panel. This way, if I move the door panel, the door handle and the door handle panel come along with it. And then I attach the door panel to the door frame. This way I can an animate things independent of each other. So you can see this, uh, the structure of how everything's attached. Everything else is attached to the door frame. So I compile and I save, and then I make sure I select the root. And now I'm gonna add the last component, which is called the actor sequence component. So you're gonna see it, so I click add, and then I type in search SEQ, it brings up the actor sequence, and then I'm gonna rename the actor sequence appropriately to what action it's doing. So I'm writing open underscore door underscore SEQ underscore actor, just to make sure that the next time I open it, I know exactly what that uh, actor sequence does. So, and then I come to the right hand side, I say open tab, I open the sequencer tab, not to be confused with uh, the regular sequencer for animation. This is within the blueprint actor. So once I do that, um, I'm renaming it uh, the animation that 
uh, this is gonna be doing. So I rename it BP underscore door underscore zero one underscore anim. Appropriately naming things will help you, you know, two weeks later on, a month after this, when you open the file and you're like, wait, what does that do again? So the next thing I want to do is to add a component that I'm going to be animating to the sequencer. Right now, what I need to do is click on track. And then once you click on track, you say component. And then because the door panel is what I'm going to be animating, I just add that door panel to it. On the door panel, I add the track for the transform and then compile and save. And then come back and open the transform and I'm, I'm gonna go down to rotate rotation and then in rotation I what I want to do is rotate around the z-axis which is the yaw so right now I'm just checking to make sure everything's working you can see when I move the numbers around the rotation of the door panel you can see the animation going so next thing to do definitely is to set some keyframes so I set a keyframe at zero and then I go to about three seconds in and then I rotate the door 90 degrees. So once that's set, you have two keyframes and it's gonna automatically interpolate between the two and the rotation from zero to three minutes and zero to 90 degrees, uh, zero to uh, three seconds, so to speak. And then I'm, I'm testing the animation, playing it back to make sure the animation is playing properly. I'm going to check it a few times and then it seems to be playing. So we're all good there. So I've saved and I've compiled. And then the next thing I want to do is to make sure I go back into my level and I look for the blueprint actor itself. I drag it into the level. Right now, it's somewhere in the world, but um, because we have a play start in this level, I'm going to have to move it closer to where the play start is, because um, if I play it right now, it's going to be far from the origin and it's going to be far from the play start. So if I play it, then uh, I'm going to have to look for it because the level itself is empty. So I just zeroed out the transform to get it closer to the play start. And then I'm moving it away from the play start because once I start playing, I don't want to be in front of the door because the play is going to begin there. And then I open up the level blueprint. Once you open up the level blueprint, you can clear out some things in there. Right now, I'm just going to remove the event tick. Event begin play, I don't necessarily need right now. I just need to trigger the animation. So in order to do that, I need a reference to the blueprint actor itself. And in order to do that, I'm going to create a variable. So click on the plus sign for variable and then just rename the variable appropriately so that you know what variable it is. Right now I'm naming it BP underscore door underscore zero one and then in the drop down I'm just gonna type in that same name again so that I can just create an object reference to it so once that's created um, I make it public uh, you don't have to do that but you can do that if you want but that it's just an option if you want to access something else within uh, that a variable you can make it public right now I just drop it into my event graph once I drag it into my event graph as a get not a set so uh, there, there are two options that you get when you drag it in there it's either a get or a set so you want to do a get and then I'm getting the key that I'm gonna be pressing which is the O key right now the key is available then what I'm gonna drag off of that uh, off of the BP underscore door is to get the play sequence. Once I drag that, I get the place. I type in play, I get the play sequence. And then off of that, I want to just, you know, key it back into my um, button for triggering, which is the O key. So I just drag it, put it back in there, and then I just adjust the nodes uh, and then compile and save. And then I go back into the level and then I hit play and then I look for the door 
I get close to the door and then I hit O a couple of times and I'm hitting it, I'm hitting it, nothing's happening. I'm hitting the O key, nothing is happening. We must have made a mistake somewhere. Um, it's not working. And then I try again, but it's not working. So let's probably eject and then we get an error right away. So the error is saying that we try to access the variable, but the variable has nothing in it for us to access. So it's giving you access none. Usually when you get an error like this, it's because um, you've tried to access uh, some attributes inside the variable, but you haven't created the attributes or there's nothing for you to access. So I selected it and then I go back down to the BP door and then I select the reference that I need itself. Then once I compile and save, again, if you get an error like that, you know, you just have to make sure you, there's something is accessible. So I go back and play now, and then most likely this should work. And I hit the O key, and yep, there we go. The animation's working as planned. So this is basically a very easy way for you to create a blueprint and just you know create a, a little animation it's easy for people who have worked in 3d studio max and other software so thank you for watching this and then come back for more if you like videos like this thank you